Well, hey, everybody, thanks for tuning in to uh, another episode of DD Self Publishing Insiders. Uh, we're this is a fun time where everybody's kind of running around a little frantic right now. There's so much going on, but that's why it's extra special that our guest has joined us today. We're, we're talking to Orna Ross. Uh, and she is with the Alliance. I mean, I'm always going to get this wrong, Orna, every time. Alliance no, of Independent man, Authors. <laughs> <laughs> I, always, I always have to check my notes because I'm like, I'll say three different words entirely. But it's the Alliance of Independent Authors, otherwise known as Ally, not Ally, as I said for a good two or three years. Yeah, uh, no, Ally. Yeah, because we are the South Ally. Ally. That's why. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's exactly what you guys are. This has been an incredible service for authors, independent authors. Um, you know, I, I, I dragged my feet for forever on joining. And then when I did join, I'm like, why didn't I join like five years sooner? This is ridiculous. This is a fantastic service. Why don't you Thank tell you. us a little bit about how, uh, how it all works? What, what is Ally? Yeah, Ally is the professional association for self-publishing authors. So uh, we are mainly a community, um, but that community is a huge hive mind, first of all, of advisors all over the world um, in different genre and the different areas of expertise in publishing. And um, there are our ambassadors who are also global and worldwide. So we are in every country, uh, literally all over the world. And um, while most of our members are either US, Europe or um, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, we literally have pe pe people everywhere. And I think that's just the nature of you know, draft to digital is the same as the nature of self-publishing. Yeah. It's a global business and it's hugely exciting. So yeah, a community, we, our mission is excellence and ethics in self-publishing. So we have a watchdog service, which, you know, um, as you guys know, there are lots of players in this, field who are really you know not here because they love books shall we say <laughs> they're here for a different motive and um you know we keep an eye on the industry and we are also an advocate for indie authors in the wider publishing industry itself and we speak to create industry bodies again all over the world through our ambassador system and we have new organization membership now which in which we're connecting to local and genre organizations on the ground around the world because while they have lots and lots of self-publishing members they are maybe not they having come up the traditional way they may be are not as tuned in to the, it's a very fast changing world, as you know. Um, and so thinking together, I think makes makes a lot of sense. So yeah, we're just essentially anything that furthers and develops the self-publisher. And um, we're there, we're trying, we're trying to provide that. A huge amount of what we do is links. And uh, we also have a partner membership for, um, obviously, Grafta Digital is a partner member for a long time. I think since you began really, um, a good self-publishing services so that our authors can pull together a team and have complete confidence that they've been vetted and approved by our watchdog desk and so on. So, yeah, that's just some of the things that we do. But self-publishing is us. Yes, that, and that is such an important thing. I, uh, to have a professional organization for this particular part of the industry, uh, you know, the traditional world has had things like that for years. So it's good. It's good to see that, and it's good to have someone kind of watching our backs out there. Yeah, I think it's essential. You know, not everyone's a joiner, but I think everybody benefits just by the fact that there is a professional organization. And when we started, we had a lot of trouble getting people to take notice of the fact that we were a professional organization and that our members did do things professionally and wanted to. And and, um, you know, and representing um, independent authors in various uh, spheres of the publishing industry, it's, it's very interesting to see how um, still, to not so much, of course, but still to this day, there's a fight that has to be had to get an, a level playing field for indie authors, uh, be it in, you know, libraries, prizes and awards, uh, the most prestigious ones are still closed to independent authors. There are lots of programs where people 
you know, will not admit self-publishers for whatever reason. Generally, the reason is that it's too much work for them to work out how on earth we're going to fit all these people into our program. Oh, it's easier to just say, no, we won't do it at all. But it's right. not good enough. Not good enough, people. So, you know. <laughs> that, Especially not work. now. I, no. I have been making the case and making the argument uh, for the past couple of years that, you know, indie publishing is publishing now. It's the traditional publishing that is the sort of outlier now. And do you find, do you, I, I'm sure you agree with that, but how about, Completely, how, yeah, how yes. much do you agree with it? <laughs> I, I agree with it so much. I wish you were here <laughs> so I could express how much I agree with this. Um, yeah, I mean, we're selling more books, you know, and the authors are now selling more books and then the trade houses all combined and put together between um, all the different wonderful actors that we have. Um, so in quantity, in in uh, dollar value and pound value and um, you know we are also outselling and we're also seeing the quality of the books just going up and up so um, and as well indies are doing such innovative and interesting things at the publishing level and leading so much in terms of marketing you know to readers understanding because i think when you when you took away all the middle folk and it was that direct relationship between reader and writer really interesting things start to happen and so indies are leading you see now the trade picks up and does things that indies have been doing you know a year or two after indies have shown hey this really works then the trade comes along and says you know hey we've just got this great new idea you know we should uh, do free books or you know something like that that yeah. indies have been doing for years so um yeah i think authors i think we're only beginning though I think authors are incredibly creative people. I think the way in which publishing happened for so many decades, in a sense, took away some of authors' confidence in their ability to manage, to publish and to write together, for example, so that I think you know, now as we're getting that confidence, I think it's the next 10 years. Also, as authors realize I'm in business, so while we talk about professional standards, we're not really professionals anymore because professionals like have CVs and they appeal to the establishment and, you know, um, indie authors are, are not like that. So we've got this whole thing now around creative digital business, which is a very liberated space where you can do really you know, if it works, you can do it. And I think we're really yeah. seeing now, we're calling it self-publishing 3.0, where authors are recognizing that, yes, it is business, actually. I don't have a career. I have a little business, yeah. a big business, a global business, a digital business, generally speaking. What does that mean for me? How do I approach it? And I really kind of take that on board. What do I give myself permission to do? How do I reach my reader? Who is my reader? How do I want to produce these books? You know, what do I want to do over the next 10 years? And um, so yeah. seeing really exciting things. Yeah, that's uh, ebooks uh, 3.0. I'm like, why didn't I? I, I think I skipped 2.0. Well, <laughs> what was 2.0? 1.0 was desktop publishing. Uh, you're okay. too young. You wouldn't remember. No, no. But... I remember <laughs> desktop publishing. Are you there? Are you? Yeah. Oh, I was yeah. there for that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so desktop publishing was number one. That was the first time that, that authors were, you know, didn't have to invest in a printing press to actually create a book. And, and poets particularly, but lots of authors jumped in and created books. 2.0 right. was the Kindle, Kindle Amazon. Oh. The arrival of ebooks and the ability to do digital audiobooks, all of that was 2.0. But in that time, I don't think authors really got to grips with the fact that uh, they, yeah, they knew in theory that they were in business. But 3.0 is recognizing you know, what it means to be in business and what sort of support authors need. And uh, talking to the wider publishing industry about the kinds of supports that have been given to authors. So, for example, grants and things like that are really pretty useless for most self-publishing authors. But what is really useful is business skills, So, right. which is something a lot of authors run away from. But when you realize that actually creative business 
it's not the same as business as usual or conventional business. And when you realize what it actually means to, to run a creative business, that's 3.0. So lots of office going direct to readers, office going wide, you know, and not, not going for just right. the obvious thing to do, but actually yeah. getting into more formats, publishing globally, really looking at selling in other countries, doing translations, getting into as many formats as possible, as many territories as possible. That's 3.0. That's, uh, I, I like that. Uh, so I think that that's us, uh, D2D. We're, we're 3.0. We're a 3.0 company. You're a 3.0 <laughs> right from the that's, start. Even, even when it was a logo. logo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so that's great. So it sounds like uh, Ally is really focused on author education. Is that, is that a fair it's assessment? A huge, that is a huge, huge focus for us. And particularly um, not, not writing education, more right. publishing education. Right. And particularly right. things that maybe other people haven't been focusing on as much, like rights, for example, how India can sell their own rights. Also, you know, how they can integrate the three aspects of the, biz of the business. Because if you do accept that you are in business, then you have to recognize that your job is not just writing, it's also publishing and it's also business. You've got to be a maker, you've got to be a manager, and you've got to be a marketeer. And you've got to somehow do all three of these all the time, keep, keep those, um, you know, juggling in the air. So, you know, the old story of I love writing, but I don't like marketing, well, that doesn't work for 3.0. Uh, you have to actually find the place where marketing integrates with your writing actually can nurture your writing a lot of people find once they stop resisting it and um, you know so yeah education at that end of the scale is where we have put a lot a lot of our energy so that's one thing that we do yeah put a lot of time into and what would you say to the authors who um because i hear that a lot is uh, the author who says i i just want to write i don't want to market uh, and they use that usually use that as an argument for going through traditional publishing so uh what what do you say to authors like that well first of all it's not an argument for going through traditional publishing because Traditional publishing will not relieve you of, of the need to market. What, what traditional right. publishers do is they will help you with uh, certain aspects if you are lucky enough to be one of the authors who actually gets a, a deal and an advance that is commensurate with actually getting a decent marketing spend. What, what a lot of authors who say something like that don't realize is that Trade publishing takes on, you know, say 25 authors, knowing that only one or two of those authors are actually going to make a return on their investment. What they don't know is which two is it going to be. They don't really mind. They put them all out into the marketplace and whichever sticks gets the investment next time out, whoever doesn't is dropped. So the whole system is kind of built on author failure. It's most, most authors fail to actually get a trade publishing deal. And then when they do, most authors fail to kind of stay in tra uh, traditional publishing because there's only room always for, for so few people. Even within the trade now, you will be expected to do your own marketing. In fact, getting a trade right. deal will very often depend on how many social media followers you have, for example, or some other evidence on an author platform. So it's not a good argument. But secondly, it's not. it doesn't work that way. Because if you saying you don't like marketing is like saying you don't like your reader. It's like yeah. saying, I don't, you know, and that's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine to say, okay, I just write for me and I just write what I want to write. That's 100% valid. That's so valid. It's such a brilliant, brilliant thing to do. But don't self publish then. Don't waste your time, everybody's time. Don't plug up the system, you know, because publishing isn't about putting a book together that's just one of the first couple of processes of publishing the design the editorial the production the distribution then putting the book up and out there that's essentially the start of it but that's only one part of it. publishing is also marketing promotion and rights and um, licensing if you're not doing marketing promotion you're not a good publisher you're just not good at your job 
So, you know, it's, it's also disrespectful of the reader, I think, to say I'm a publisher who doesn't like marketing. So it's hard work. That's why people don't want to do it and resist it. That's it's right. a different kind of work that needs a different yeah. set of skills. But when you stop resisting it, when you stop saying that sentence, which is so widespread and authors encourage each other in it a, a lot, when you actually let that go, and when you realize, okay, marketing means reaching my reader. Marketing means communicating with my reader. Marketing means actually embodying something of the spirit and the nature that led me to write this book in the first place getting that into communication forms that are tiny and small and that can reach the reader in different sort of ways and maybe even, you know, deliver the mission that maybe write the book in the first place. Can it, That right. can be encompassed in my blog, it can be encompassed in a podcast, in, in tweets, in, in so many different ways. When we start to think about it that way, then marketing begins to nurture the writing, the writing nurtures the marketing, and you've got this nice symbiotic thing going on. So I just don't allow that sentence. It's not simple. <laughs> <laughs> not allowed. Not allowed. All right. Uh, so what are some of the, uh, the things that you guys offer that help authors get through this sort of uh, road bump? Uh, you know, tools to teach them the business and that sort of thing. Yeah, so we've we've got a podcast like yourselves. We've got we've got a daily blog, a weekly podcast. We've got um, all sorts of tools really for people at different. Are you still there, Kevin? I am. Can you see me? Okay. No, you seem to die. I don't know why. Um, oh, no. oh yeah, I can see you now again. Sorry, I don't know what happened. There. Okay. Um, okay. What you, was you, I were, you had me worried for a moment there. I thought maybe I disappeared and didn't realize it. I don't know. It just it just. <laughs> yeah. No, you're back. Uh, no, you were um, you were sharing some of the uh, some of the tools and resources you guys have for authors. Yeah. So yeah, and um, daily blog and and a weekly podcast. I think you know where we we have a member Q and A where they can kind of bring their particular issues and, and we identify those. We've got a Facebook uh, forum for our authors at two levels. The entrepreneur um, membership is for authors who have sold more than 50,000 books or equivalent in the last year or two. And our author membership then, which is consists of, of people at varying different stages. And we turn a lot of that original content then into what we call uh, um, our ultimate guides. So to getting reviews or libraries or whatever. And we have a, a library of books as well. So yeah, we're constantly kind of working with people and asking them what they need and want. And this is an area I think, you know, where there's just so much you can do and you just have to do what you can because it's always changing as well. And yeah. so we're always trying to kind of keep up with each other. And I think, you know, indie authors are fantastic in the way they help each other. And so I would say that's yeah. the biggest resource of all on our forum where people ask questions and 25 people dive in with an answer and maybe 25 different answers sometimes right. depending on the question so um yeah that's I've, i have found if you ask a hundred authors a a question you will get six thousand answers speaking of which you guys actually have uh sort of in your in your corner a whole lot of people we know uh in the industry some influencers and and friends of of d2d &D, folks we've even had on the show like uh joanna penn and uh michael laron and folks like that uh you guys have quite a raft of of uh intellectual giants working with you we are so lucky. I mean, we really are. The, uh, the, the skill level and the generosity of our advisors is just it's, it's yeah. astonishing. And literally, we are those people, you know. Without them, the show doesn't run. And, and it's incredible, I think, how generous indie authors are. And, yeah. um, and then loads of people whose names other people don't necessarily know who are equally yeah. generous in front of and behind the scenes. It just makes coming to work every day. And I'm sure it's the same for you guys um, at Draft yeah. Digital in the forums. Just being around it is such a, such a 
privilege, really. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, this, it, that's one of the greatest things about this job is the authors themselves. Uh, and I, I know people say things like that and it's just sort of a, a kiss up kind of thing, but we actually truly mean it. I actually truly mean it. So uh, no, it yeah, is. these are amazing, it's an amazing group to work with. Um, so you're okay. This has been going on for how long has uh, Ally been around actually? How long? You uh, 2012. We founded a at the London Book Fair 2012. So we all started around the same time. That's that's yeah. The if I remember correctly, you were 2013. The, was was that right, or did you start in 2012? 2013 is kind of when we officially like everything. I think was ramp was sort of really ramping up. 2012, we actually the roots of the company are there in 2012 so okay we were well, we were around we just weren't what we are today <laughs> sure well in 2013 that ally actually awarded uh drafted digital with our sort of service of the year award which is not oh, something wow. we've done yeah in, in recent years um and i met with chris and dan and not yourself i don't think that year so, um i wasn't there yet i didn't go along there. until 2016. yeah ah, that explains it yes so that, that was all pre-k <laughs> yeah, <laughs> D two D P K. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, oh, wow, you guys have really been. Uh, I mean, that that is essentially that era is kind of the, not quite the birth of this industry, but uh, not far from it. Only about four years off from uh, when all this craziness began. So, you guys have been yeah. a part of it from almost the beginning. Yeah, I think it. it, it when things started to get serious, you know, when it when it's changed from being just, you know, just putting your book up on Kindle into being yeah. something else, where where more people and more service, good services came along, and where people realized, well, actually, if I put all my eggs in one publishing basket, I'm I'm not really any more indie than right. I was if I was tied to a trade publisher, that actually being independent means something a bit more than that. Um, right. um, so, um, yeah, I think that I think 2012, 2013 was when people began to see this is much bigger than one company and it's much bigger than, you know, just authors who want to self-express. This is actually going to change everything. And it has. Yeah. So the watchdog part of of the business. Uh, what are some of the ways that you are advocating for or helping authors in the industry? Well, we, we, you know, actually got a list, a ratings list of the best and worst um, services on our um, self-publishing advice uh, center, which is selfpublishingadvice.org. And um, John Doctor heads up our, our our watchdog desk. I'm sure you know John. And John is you know tireless in his yeah. dealings with both the best and the worst. And he has produced a book for us, which is how to choose the best um, self publishing service for you. And that includes everybody from the smallest sort of freelance editor up all the way up to the largest um, yeah. big companies. And we, we we speak to people. We we represent our authors, our members. If they're having trouble with someone who's clearly not being fair, we will actually take up the calls on their behalf. We have a contracts desk where we have sample agreements and things that you can look at and compare the offering that you've been given and um, compared to what it should be or ought to be. We have um, now have our own dedicated literary agent also who will review agreements and say, you know, what's missing. Because very often with a publishing contract or a self-publishing agreement, what's there might look okay, but there might be some very important auto protection clauses that are not there. So, right. um, and all of that kind of uh, semi-legal, if not legal advice, we're not lawyers, but right. that guidance is all um, just part of your membership is free of charge. So obviously that can be very useful if you're at that stage of actually negotiating a contract or an agreement. And we yeah. have called out um, certain players in the marketplace for um, disreputable practices. We've supported authors to when we've been taking class actions against different players. So at lots of different levels, we're, we're involved with that. That's uh, that's good because there are a lot of predatory services out there, as you you pointed out earlier. 
Uh, and I, yeah. I got caught up in some when I, when I first started, you know, like the agents who charge the reading fees and things like that. So you guys it's are terrible. helping to alert people to that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it would be really helpful if people like Google would help us and not, you know, if you actually Google how to publish a book or how to self-publish a book, you are going to get, first of all, a whole load of, of problematic players because they got big, deep pockets and they, they pay to be there. So it's very, very easy to, to get caught. And I think once you know you say, well, how, how did the author not realize? But when you don't know, you, you don't know what you don't know. And so um, True. it's it's important to, it can be frustrating work sometimes because these guys really do know how to take advantage of people. And they particularly go after older people who want to write their life story or right. you know, and, um, and also they trade in dreams. You know, they imply that you know, they can, organize Hollywood deals and major publishing um, deals and so on. And yeah, it's it's not, that end of the business is not a nice end of the business. And with self-pushing now being so popular, you've got a lot of players coming in. Another problem, they're not actually malicious, bad actors, but people who are not competent at what they do. Yeah. So they think, oh, I have a great idea. Um, authors would love this and they set up something and they don't actually know what the author needs at all um, right. and they think they're providing a good service and they're not or you know English teachers who think they can edit or from that up to software creators who who are you know yeah providing um, services that don't really have legs so yeah, there's all yeah, of that right. as well. Uh, and do you guys do some sort of like certification or Get somebody like a seal of approval or something. Well, we our partner membership is our seal of approval. So okay. uh, services apply to join as partner members, and they go through a vetting process. And they and, and it's a discussion. You know, if it is, if we do have somebody who like that is a bad, isn't sorry, a bad. If they're a bad actors with sort of bad intent, well, clearly they're not going to be able to join Ally anyway. But if it's somebody who has kind of put out services that are less than brilliant, but they want to get it, then we can help and guide them and, and help them to do that. So, yeah, we, we like to think that our partner membership badge is that kind of seal of approval. Yeah, that's uh, that's good. I think I, I like that. Your membership is the approval. I like that. <laughs> uh, well, we've had some comments and from some familiar names, too. I'm going to go ahead and pop a couple of these up. Uh, I, uh, this gentleman with all the skulls is our good friend, Mark Leslie LeFay. Uh, like Kevin, I delayed getting a membership to Ally, but I learned rather quickly it's definitely worth, definitely a worthwhile investment. Amazingly helpful resources. I could not agree more with that statement. That could not have come. You don't have to comment. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah, Mark is an easy sell, though. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was. He's a good uh, we had uh, we got quite a few comments uh, i'm looking for some questions here uh oh uh, charles says he wishes he could be in two places at once uh so uh we'll have to uh, charles the good news is there will be a transcript and replay of the video which you can find uh if you go to selfpublishinginsiders.com so go check that out um so I did see at least one question mark in this group. I'm going to f find it. Here we are. Oh, it's from Mark. Uh, so question, Orna, you got into the business because you're a writer, but Ally must take a lot of your time. How do you balance all your Ally work with your personal writing projects to ensure you keep writing? Yeah, I write every morning. So I, I'm, I'm like somebody, you know, who has a full-time job. Ally is the day job, and I do my yeah. writing outside of that. And actually, I had a short period of time where I didn't do that. I left everything. I, I sort of was going to be the full-time writer. And it didn't last long because I never wrote less in my life. I just didn't get anything done. I Isn't that the way? Yeah. That's just <laughs> always the way. Yeah, yeah, everybody for, wants to go full time, quote unquote. But once you do it, you lose your mind. You can't. You, for some reason, you can't keep writing. <laughs> I think there is a certain kind of person who can, but I am not that yeah. person, um, yeah. which I quickly learned. So actually, Ally came along then and was the perfect combination because yeah, it just fits in really yeah. nicely. Yeah. Uh, 
here's a, this is a good question from Kathy on YouTube. Uh, how does your revision process differ between your fiction and your poetry? Yeah, poetry I think of as like, um, it's almost like physical, it's feeling, it's moving words around in space. And I, I always think yeah, revising a poem is like being a jigsaw. It's like you've kind of thrown all the wor words out onto the table and then you've kind of got to fix them in uh, so that it fits. And when a poem is finished, it's locked and you cannot move a single word um, without it kind of falling apart. Fiction is a much longer term uh, thing and for fiction I do a few passes and then it's done. You know, I, I have to actually have to be prized out of my sticky little hands because I would just keep going and going as if it was a poem and you're never going to yeah. fix it up. It doesn't add right. to the story at all to, for me to keep fiddling about with the thing. So um, fiction I just do, I do a pass for plot and I do a pass for um, it, it, sort of general language, if, if, to, to put it, you know, just generally making sure that the tone and consistency of, of everything comes from start to finish. And then I do, it goes to an editor who does the first pass on it. I get it back and then I do a final pass and then it gets proofread that it's gone. So, um, yeah. Do you find that that's a, is that a chance, is that uh, shifting gears between poetry and fiction? Is that a, I don't write poetry. I'm just no. apparently not a poetic soul, I guess. Yeah, but, uh, I bet you I, I, I can say I kind of appreciate it, but I mean, is it is it a, uh, you know, is it a mental shift to go between the two or is it pretty easy for you? I think there's a lot of kind of precious thinking that goes on around writing poetry and writing fiction and writing generally. There are a lot of things like the writing and marketing thing that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. There are a lot of things um, that people say that are not necessarily true, that are, uh, but when you say them, they become your reality. So if you yeah. think you can't write poetry unless you're sitting on the side of the cliff gazing into a beautiful sunset with your beloved beside you, then that's what you'll get. You won't be able to write poetry unless you're sitting on blah, 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 blah. But if you tell yourself, actually, I can write a poem every day, and I'm going to put a poem up on Instagram every day, no matter how it goes, no matter how different it is, I'm just going to get it out there. Then something different happens to your poetry, and actually, the poetry improves, uh, even though it sounds very mundane and very anti poetic. So, um, yeah, I don't, I do think you have to get yourself into the mind state and creative condition in which poetry can happen, and that's the challenge. And for that, I need to meditate walk, you know, get away from the desk. But I definitely yeah. need to do that. And it's one of the reasons I like to write poetry because it makes me do those things. Yeah. You're you're implying something that makes people uh, uncomfortable, Lorna, is that uh, practice makes perfect. People don't like to hear that. They want to be no. they want certain arts to be pure. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Every wedge this idea of the spontaneous overflow uh, that just kind of happens, yeah, and yeah. genius overflowing. I don't really believe in that. I think it happens occasionally, but not until you've done a ton of work first. Right, right. So I have another good question here from uh, coming in from YouTube. Jeffrey Wells says, uh, how can Ally help authors, uh, me, uh, with my Amazon questions? And, well, Jeffrey, it very much depends on what your Amazon question is. Is your Amazon question about, you know, how do I upload my book or is your Amazon question, um, you know, my earnings have crashed and I don't know why my ads aren't working anymore or is, you know, it depends. So we would have different ways of helping you depending on what that question is. We have an open channel with Amazon. Uh, we encourage people always to use their own support desk, first of all. But we do have, um, we can bring issues directly to Amazon and have found that they have been very helpful to our members in the past. So perhaps we could help in that way I, without knowing more about the exact nature of your issue. It's hard for me to say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is actually a, a pretty remarkable thing all on its own that people can, because Amazon and some of these other platforms can be so inscrutable sometimes when it comes to finding help for issues. A lot of them try to push you off on 
fairly useless forums uh, where someone says, I have problem X and 2,000 other people say, I also have problem X. Uh, so it is pretty remarkable that you guys offer a, a pathway for people to actually get help. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that we can solve every single Amazon issue that people have. We certainly can't. Um, if you, if, know, if you solve one, you've solved more than Amazon solves. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I think it's very, very hard to be a huge, you know, a huge service providing the sort of service that's being provided there under the conditions yeah. that they're being provided and keep people happy. It's not possible because it's not, yeah. it's just not, it's not person shaped. And so, but I do think, you know, that there are ways in which some problems can can be solved. And sometimes authors don't know those simple solutions. And if we can help, we certainly will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got another question from uh, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. It says, can you talk about how being a member of Ally saves authors fees or gets authors discounts on specific publishing services? This is an important thing that I didn't ask you about earlier. So. Thank you, thank Mark. You, Mark. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely lovely as ever. Um, yeah, so I should have said, of course, that people often say to me, I can't afford to join Ally, and actually you will save money within the first week or two of joining because all of our, well, most, if not all, of our partner members provide discounts on all their services. And that includes, again, from from smaller players like individual freelance operators to in England Spark set up and revision fees, which can you know really add um, huge savings for, for an author. So you've got the trust thing, you know, you're getting a good service, but you're also getting it at a very good deal. We also have an affiliate um, program every member is automatically um, an affiliate if they want to be they get an affiliate key and therefore if they bring in an author friend or two and um, 30 percent back of the first year's fees is returned to to the author and some of our members actually make a nice um some every month uh, bringing in because they have particularly those who have good websites themselves uh, and an author community themselves and they yeah. can actually be quite a bit of an, an income and get people to join up so yeah there are lots of ways in which it doesn't actually cost money to join if you use your membership and yeah. um, that's, that's aside from the fact uh, of the actual services that are there Here's a here's a comment actually uh, that does involve writing money. It says I've learned so. This is Victoria. Uh, I've learned so much uh, information through Ally. It's amazing, and my membership was the first thing I spent my writing money on when I had extra. So that's Thank quite you. a testimonial right there. That's Writers lovely. don't typically have money, much less no. Extra. So <laughs> <laughs> you're doing good things, Victoria. Well done on having extra and and on reinvesting it, on making more. Good. Yes, good, good. you're investing in your future. Yeah, that's uh, and there's so many great resources. Um, and it's really interesting. It's 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 sort of there's a line, Orna, and I don't know why. Uh, it's either you've heard of Ally and you're a member and you love it and always have. Uh, or you've never heard of Ally at all. <laughs> so yeah. we're trying to bridge that gap. Uh, I don't know why that is, but, uh, you know, yeah, the people thank who you. hear of it go right for it. Yeah, I think so. If you're if you're a joining person, um, you know, it just does make sense to join. But you're right. It's very like books. You know, people say so and so is a famous author, and then they list off these writers, and I've never heard of them. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, are they famous? Exactly. They're not. They're not famous to me. And yeah. you know, when you do things like we're doing here, you know, you do podcasts, and you do blogs, putting stuff out there, and all the rest of it, you can think that people know about you and must come across you somewhere along the line but no it's not inevitable at all and um yeah keep on spreading the word please <laughs> yes oh absolutely i uh, you know we do our best to try to make sure people have heard of you guys and are going in and say same with dd though i feel like i market everyone else as much as i market d to d it's really uh it's a yeah. very exhausting marketing job frankly <laughs> the whole world. marketing the world marketing marketing all the good publishing uh, companies that are out there 
Yeah, uh, I so, think we all do that for each other, though, because we know how important right. it is. The authors are put in touch with the right people. Yeah. Well, I think enough of us have been on the receiving end of uh, the not so great services that when we when we do know someone out there is is actually looking out for us, it's very important that we we spread the word. You know, so I, I that's uh, right. that's just the industry. We all do that for each other. Uh, do you so? Um, because you're focused entirely on independent publishing, do you ever have any scrapes or anything when it comes to the traditional world? I mean, because you guys are going to like London Book Fair and, you know, you're going to all these events and things where you would encounter the traditional publishers. I don't want to trash talk anybody. I'm just wondering if you ever have any sort of static when it comes to those guys. I have been um, in situations where I've been disappointed, I'll put it that way, at, at responses. So, um, you know, here in the UK, particularly, where sometimes there have been, uh, say, government inquiries into creative industry issues or publishing issues, and we are invited uh, to make a submission, and then I'll find for whatever reason our submission isn't take on board so yeah i have had those kind of disappointing things or walking into a room and knowing that our organization thinks completely differently to every other publishing organization yes. in the room which yeah. sees you know um amazon and self-publishing as a problem and as, 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 as a bad yeah. thing whereas obviously we're, we're taking the opposite approach and right Something on, for example, author income. There was, a, there was a lot of activity in Australia and the UK in the, in the past couple of years, and actually in the US as well. The, the Authors Guild did a survey um, into author income, and it was with so many inaccuracies that were reported and a complete ignoring of um, self publishing as the one area where author income is very much on the rise. And it was as if that right. just was not happening and you know we did a lot of work trying to get that to the forefront and saying you know if you give a, a writer a grant you're feeding them for oh, a week and a half now besides most grants if you give somebody publishing skills you're actually feeding them for life and in this yeah. current world we've got to start taking on board how readers are buying books how authors are producing books and and so on and just deafening silence you know so sometimes that's that can be disappointing but i'm sure it will change it just needs more time but it's it's yeah, kind of time. it's got beyond its time you know it really should be it should really should be happening now i in, i think uh frankly with everything that's been happening in 2020 i think we're we're starting to see that shift uh you know i think we're starting to see People are embracing ebooks more, which is sort of the that's the, almost the calling card of the indie publisher is the ebook. Um, but it is important this this misreporting or this you know lack of reporting sometimes. It's important that we correct that and fix that because that information gets used for all kinds of you know passing rules and you know organizations use that to determine whether you can be a member. Uh, there's all kinds of ways in which that information gets used. So making sure it's accurate is very important. It's so I'm really you're looking out for us. <laughs> yeah, well, next year, um, in 2021, we actually want to work to get our own research together and, and get, get a really big sort of press um, push behind that in a number of different countries. But one of the things we found is that traditional media and um, newspapers uh, don't necessarily want to hear those kinds of things and they're very because yeah. they too are suffering from similar things to traditional publishing they're they're very you know they have an ear for that kind of story they don't necessarily want the kind of story that we want to tell but anyway we're going to tell it yeah. uh yes uh, i i i uh, there's a tangent we can go off on for quite a while as the the way mainstream media handles self-publishing as a topic, uh, which is unfortunate because there's so I think there are so many rich stories that uh, the mainstream media would really get a lot of play out of if they would just turn their focus just a little, just a little and see some of what's going on out here. <laughs> uh, that. So your frustration is shared. Uh, I, I, I also get uh, disappointed with the way some of these things get handled and covered. 
uh, in the news and elsewhere. Um, so you guys are, you're about to start doing some of your own research. Are you partnering with anyone now that uh, supplies you with research and data that you can use for this stuff? No, we've only up to now done very informal stuff, just done our own okay. in-house. None of us is an experienced researcher, but next year we're actually going to get some formal research done. Yeah, work with the company that is, you know, and make sure that it is not just quantitative, quantitative yeah. as they call it. Um, yeah, I mean that it is quantitative and not just the qualitative uh, personal experience stuff, which is what we've, we've made or done up to now. I just yeah. realized it's very really dark as I've been talking to you here. I, well, I've just assumed that, you know, this is you being dramatic. It's like slowly <laughs> fading out. It's like it, we're here at the end of the broadcast, too, and you, and you turn the light on and revealed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It's all good. Uh, but we are, we are here at the end. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I want to make sure people know where to find you guys online. Now, uh, you take a look at, did I get the URL correct? You did. Um, and it's a very long excellent. one. So it's next a time very I long one. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta work right. on, that's our, as a member of Ally, I have to help you now to, to let's, let's find some ways to get this shorter so we can yeah, uh, share this sure. faster. Ally.org. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so for those who are listening to the broadcast and rather than watching, it is allianceindependentauthors.org. Uh, you'll be able to find links to it in the show notes of the episode. So wherever you found us, go look there and we'll be right there. Uh, or no, uh, anything else you want to throw in right as we're wrapping up here? Um, no. And thank you, Kevin. Everything has been uh, very nicely covered. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And uh, thank you for the dramatic reveal at the end uh, by turning on the light. I appreciate it. Uh, everyone else, uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, Orna, thanks so much for being a part of the show. For everyone watching and listening, uh, we really appreciate you being here. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. If you go to youtube.com slash draft to digital, you can find our channel. Subscribe there. You'll uh, you'll be alerted. Uh, if you click the little bell icon, I'm legally obligated to tell you that as a YouTuber. Click the little bell for notifications. Uh, you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash draft to digital. And uh, if you want to count down to the next live broadcast, go bookmark d 2 dlivecom You can also find links. You'll find links to whatever's coming up uh, on that site, but you can also find links to sort of the archive of back episodes. Uh, but the real archive, the real jewel, is if you go to selfpublishinginsiders.com, you'll find all the episodes, all the people we've interviewed, and uh, there's some amazing information there from wonderful, uh, brilliant, amazing, and beautiful, and dramatically revealed guests like Orna Ross. Thank you so much, Orna, again, for being a part of the show. I'm off to check it out. Thank you, Kevin. Right. Take care. Okay, Bye, everybody. Everyone. We'll see you all in the next Self-Publishing Insiders with Drafted